Section 4.6.7 in the GTA CCR 2015 rule states that you need one diagonal brace going from the lowest point, which is going to be our datum point, to the top, right above the driver's head. So that point is going to span, of course, diagonally from here to here. Okay? This has to be in there, it can't be modified, cut, distorted, or anything like that. But also, in the rule book, down a little further in 4.6.17, that says that you can add additional bracing. So what we're going to do is form the X brace. The X brace is going to start with our main brace, since this is right hand drive, it's going to go from the bottom left of the car to the top right of the car. It states that it has to be within 12 inches, but we're not going to go anywhere near that because that's going to be uh, right about here. We don't need that kind of clearance for our driver. So the second brace is going to go, and this is going to be cut in half, from the bottom right of the datum point up to the same point just, just past the bend on the left side. Okay. So first we already started out here. I already took the liberty of measuring this. And this is an overcut measure or an over measure. We got 56 inches. So I already cut the tube and had it ready. So that's just to save a little bit of video space here. So there's not really a need to uh, uh, shoot a bunch of video of me uh, slice the tubes up. So if you don't really know how to, how to you know, cut a tube up, then you, know, then you probably shouldn't be doing this. So, just like in the tube notching video, I'm going to make my face line. I'm going to make my throat line. I'm going to feed this one into the saw here, and we're going to find out how close we are on that one, and then we'll go measure and cut that one. tube it quite well when you're measuring, mocking up, getting ready to weld, or even packing it all together. So, alright, looks like I got a great fit. So first I'm going to clean these tubes up a little bit. Get a nice clean weld. So I'm not going to use any more than just a, uh, a prep pad or something called a scotch brite by the brand. Clean both of these ends up extremely well. Nice, clean, fresh metal. At the same time, I also have my uh, tungsten, my TIG welder sharpened and cleaned up and ready to, ready to go. So as soon as I get both of these sides cleaned up, start laying down the tacks on this one and uh, get it all set in place. And just remember, we're only going to tack weld. And the reason why is because if we need to change it later, uh, and we discover that during the, uh, the fit check and whatnot, then uh, it's better to break down just a tack weld as opposed to an entire weld or having to rebend the, the whole main hoop all over again. So, just to be on the same side, we're only going to do tacks on this one. up again. And I'm going to use this straight edge here to kind of guide and figure out where exactly the line is and where the center of this is because this section here has to be two separate tubes and they have to be completely in line and they have to match this tube. Okay. So to recap here, this diagonal brace has to be unmodified. Okay. It cannot be uh, cut in half, it cannot be bent, it cannot be anything except for one solid piece all the way from one corner to the other one. So the second one that we're adding in here is considered additional reinforcement as per the rules. We're allowed to have additional reinforcement, but this piece itself has to be two separate pieces. It can't cut the main. You can only cut the two separate pieces. So to make sure that we get them in line, uh, I'm gonna use this straight edge here. I'm gonna try to place it here at both ends. And the idea here is to get the inside of your tube or your straight edge to mate up with the inside of this line on the inside of the tube where the actual tube itself is going to mate. So you just got to kind of stare straight down at it 
and get that right there and not move. Evenly, and then we're going to mark out the center. Now I'm only going to mark out one section of the center as my guide. Okay, so I'm going to start at the top. Okay, you start at the bottom, it doesn't really make a difference which one you do, but we're going to start at the top piece, and a small pre-cut section. And just like in the tube notching video, create the face line, and then the throat line. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this piece, and then when we fit that in, I'll go back and do this one at the same time. That notch is nicely fit. Run the inside of the tube matches up with that line, the inside line that we have here to make sure that this stays the same on both sides. So we go our face line and then our throat line. Now we'll go notch that out. Hopefully we'll get it right on the first try. In. So again, we're just going to run with the tack weld right now and not the full weld. We'll get the full weld later on after we get everything all lined up. So let's just start with the tack. Okay, so it's a lot easier working with a smaller tube, so we've already measured this one out. We're about the center of of that diagonal brace there to the edge here. It's about 37, 38 inches, somewhere in there. So I've already cut and cleaned the tube. So we're just going to set it up, kind of use our eyes here to get it in line. And I'm going to start at the lower corner here. This is an easier notch to, to create. Okay, so we'll set this up again, just like the tube notch video create my face line. Now this side of the notch, I'm not obviously going to put a throat line on there because I'm going to try to utilize this section of it. It's going to mate to the tube when I make this cut. But this throat line, we're going to make that. Just get it kind of roughly clamped. I'm going to use my eyeballs here to kind of set it up right. And we'll get to this section. So, rule of thumb applies one third tube diameter, just like in the tube notch video. And we'll make the face line, get the throat line, the other throat line, and we'll cut that out. Number two. So I'm just going to toss this in here, just throw it in kind of loosely for the moment. This is a very important measurement that we have to make sure that we maintain on this one, and that is our datum width. So as we mentioned before, we have our datum width of no more than 55 inches. So with this all put together, we need to make sure that we're within that 55 inch tolerance or that 55 inch width. But don't forget, at the same time, we still have the tolerance of a half an inch. So our datum width is going to be no more than 54 inches. And right now I'm at 53 and 7 eighths of an inch. So we're good. Now, if your datum did come in just slightly over, you're going to have to tweak your main hoop in, which you can take some straps or you can take, you know, just about anything you've got to make sure you pull it in together a little bit. But remember, if you do that, that's going to knock this angle out. So make sure that if you have it, your datum width already set in there, that you go back and you probably have to make some adjustments to your other tubes. So since we didn't warp or get out of, out of dimension at all, uh, this tube's ready to go in here. So I'm going to make sure that I line this up almost perfectly, right where it needs to be. There's almost nothing looks worse than a crooked tube. And we can lay down our tacks. So with only a tack weld on that side, we do have some wiggle room here, and that allows us to get our tube just right where it needs to be. So I'm going to 
sure that this lines up. Okay, well, we've got the main hoop back in place. The driver's already come through for his fit check. Now, the initial fit checks, they take roughly an hour to do, and I need to focus more on the driver and less on the camera. So, I don't have that on video, and it's not going to be added to this. But a few things that I'm going to go over here is, one, I use the absolute most sophisticated seat placement system available on the market today. <laughs> and uh, basically all I do is uh, set the boards in, and it moves the seat up or down, fore and aft, and also takes care of the layback. Now, the driver has to be in full upper gear while you do this. So... Things like the Hans device, if they have one, a helmet, those are all very important things that they need to have. You need to make sure that on your initial fit check and many other ones, that your driver is in full upper restraints and, uh, and basically getting measured to how they're going to be in the vehicle. Okay. Now, one very important thing, take as much time as you like with your driver, okay? Because they, they gotta you know experience and get the comfort of all kinds of different placements, and they can't always just drive it around the block and and you know. Uh, say yes, I like this, or no, I don't, because you know everything's all loose and just kind of sitting here. So, take lots of time with them and let them, you know, really feel where they're at, and uh, if they like the, you know, the placement of it, and you know, go over a few different options, explain a few different things for them. So, 